Morning guys. So yesterday was a really tough day. Gradually and slowly I could feel the rain and the wetness soaking through all my clothes. Because of the previous days of being wet as well, um, I knew that today had to be a day of drying out um, because by the time I arrived here everything was completely wet. Anyhow, I, as you can see, it's not raining now, thank goodness. Right, I shall show you some of the devastation of all my wet gear and also a little bit about the surroundings of it. Right, just hang on. So here you, you see all my gear scattered about, um, drying out. The tent is completely empty now. I'm just letting the air circulate through it, so help to dry it out. On the other side, I have my rain gear. Yeah, so you can see here how I've just tightened that up onto the branch. And yeah, you can do that with obviously virtually all your rain gear or anything else. Um, in fact, the bags on my, the bag tents have also got something similar. So they've been attached that way. The guidebooks, as much as I try to keep them, I mean, um, I think the best one is, is this. <laughs> it really is sudden. Um, yeah, it's, I've got pages stuck together here. You can see it. Yeah, not great. Good job I've got it electronically as well, but the guidebook obviously is particularly helpful in terms of giving me background, telling me where the next toilets are, where I might get water and stuff like that. Um, so not great that all the pages are kind of stuck together. So I'm hoping they will dry out a little bit more. So Newby Forest was originally a sand dune area. And in fact, these little hillocks that you can see, you can imagine them actually being sand dunes. And of course, the great thing for me is that they've created quite a sheltered area for wild camping. Another piece of evidence is actually, if I show you this peg, you can see when I've pulled it out, it's like a soil sample. You can actually see how it, the sand is trapped there between the peg. It looks really beautiful this morning with the sun streaking through. I could actually stay here the rest of the day. That's a good reminder that these pines are actually Corsican pines. Apparently they do well in the sand. the forest behind us and then this wonderful beach
So I've just come through the village of Aberfour and I'm dealing with another estuary. Now most of the estuaries that I've had to go along are really boring and mentally draining. However, this one's really beautiful and kind of got a beach obviously all the way along, obviously when the tide is out and I'm really enjoying the distant views. So I'm finding so many of these little coves here. It's a Saturday afternoon, four o'clock. And I must have passed 10 of these and not a person in sight. Life is tough when you walk the Anglesey coastal path and you have to take a break to dry some clothes. So this is where I'm going to camp tonight. Probably going to leave it another half hour or so, maybe a bit longer. Even though it's nine o'clock at night, it's still quite a few people around. But I should be up bright and early. Morning folks, yes behind me you have the morning view. So yesterday I did about 15 miles to bring me to 100 miles. So I've now got about 30 to do to get to the finish. Plan today is to get past the, um, the main thing this morning is the valley airfield. And then really it's on to four mile bridge back onto Holy Island um, over to South Stacks and then finally back into Hollyhead. One other thing, I was in two minds last night if to set up my tent or not. So glad I did. Actually rained last night only for half an hour, but that would have been a sorry mess this morning if I hadn't have camped. Anyhow, um, the other thing to know is on this beach, so other people camping as well. So I think it's fairly acceptable. Right, I'm going to have my breakfast with the view. See you later. So I found another useful mat. It's been quite some time since I've seen one of these. Um, so not this morning, but the previous day, I was actually here in Newbury Forest. So I had to go right round this estuary here, then back down here, up to Aberfour, 
But then that actually had a beautiful estuary. Best one I've seen yet. In fact, the only one I've enjoyed. Then along the coastline, all the way to Vosne here. Now, today, the challenge is um, getting below the RAF Valley, up to Four Mile Bridge, and then essentially you're coming down Holy Island, round the south side of Holy Island, round, and I'm trying to get over to South Stacks, hopefully, um, by tonight, I may be leaving the last 10 miles to the following day. Yeah, so that's the plan. So Joy, we are going to follow another estuary now to Four Mile Bridge. Hell, I'm going to have to slow down now. And I think I go this way. So this is Four Mile Bridge now, which I'm just crossing. distance you can see the lighthouse of South Stax and over in this direction you can see the fog warning station of North Stax. So this is a magazine house uh, that was used for storage of explosives for the quarry that is round the corner going towards um, Hollyhead where we're heading. In the distance you can see the breakwater and the stone for that breakwater was quarried from this mountain.
That is one mighty chunky bench. And it does have a view as well. Just hang on. So my thoughts on the Anglesey Coastal Path. Overall, I think it's a great and wondrous path. Um, the signage, as I've said before, is absolutely brilliant. Strangely, just as I'm coming over the Anglesey, sorry, the Hollyhead Mountain, um, I think there's been, some of the signs have been vandalized. So you need to be on your guard against that. But normally, um, you're in good hands in terms of the signage. I think 130 miles obviously is a lot to chew off um, trying to fit it into your, your sort of holidays so obviously with two weekends and a, uh, a week in between you can get nine days out of it and I think to maximize it you actually need all of those nine days if I was going to miss any bits then probably sort of Menai Bridge to Newbury Forest because you actually have to cut the southwest corner. You're not allowed around the actual coast because it's private land. And so that bit is a bit hard going and it's 20 miles. Also, I think the first 10 miles out of Hollyhead, that's a bit tough as well. So you could, you could make it a, a more of a 100 mile route or do 100 miles of coastal path and you'd have a great time. So this particular path gets a thumbs up for me okay onward we go so in the distance you can see the mountain we've come down now we really are getting very close to Hollyhead what we have here is Soldiers Point Hotel although it was originally built in 1848 by the um, contracting engineer for the breakwater. So clearly he made a lot of money. I'll show you some more pictures as I get closer to it. But it is a bit derelict now because it burnt down in 2011. Clearly has seen better days. Great water. And of course, as I was saying before, the stone is quarried from the mountain we've just come down. And it's actually over a mile long when it was built one of the longest in the world opened in 1873 and took 28 years to build and was opened by the prince of wales who was obviously the son of queen victoria well we've completed 130 miles of the Anglesey Coastal Path. When you do finish something like this, you kind of expect brass bands playing and champagne flowing. But I'm afraid here there's nothing to signify that we've actually finished. There's no finish line as such. Just the original start position. Anyhow, you can't have everything. At least the signage was good all the way around, even if it is a bit lacking at the end. Anyhow, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed the journey too. And of course, I would appreciate if you joined me on the next one. Possibly if you could subscribe. And also, don't forget, thumbs up for the ducks. Bye for now, folks.